Tonight on Optimal Play, time to get physical. We're taking a look at Nathaniel Cho from the Arkham Horror, the card game investigator starter decks. My name is Brandon. I'm Steven. Steven, how are you tonight? I'm good. When you're talking about getting physical, you know, it made me think about Cobra Kai. Have you seen it yet? No, I haven't. How is it? Okay. Uh, it's amazing. Um, so, you know, just post in the comments if you think Nathaniel Cho would be Cobra Kai or Miyagi Do. I think we really got to get a little competition going here. I'm just going to have to smile and nod at this. <laughs> yeah, pretend I, you get it. I don't uh, know what we're talking about, but uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's, I'm excited. It's, it's the, Friday. What's it's what that? all the cool kids are doing, you know, karate. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll type it into the internet and uh, see where I end up. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Friday night, so I'm excited to chill with a beer. And Guardian's historically my favorite class. I, I identify as a Guardian. I've got the blue name on uh, on on Arkham Horror Discord servers. So, uh, you know, I'll, I should be right at home. Yeah. Um, shall we dive in? Let's do it. Want to give us Nathaniel? Yeah, so Nathaniel himself, uh, the boxer, is three will, two book, five fist, and two agility. He's a criminal and a warden. That seems like kind of contradictory. No. Um, and as a response, when you deal damage to an enemy by an event or a fight ability on an event, deal one additional damage, limit once per phase. Uh, and his Elder Sign is plus one. If this skill test is successful during an attack, return an event from your discard pile to your hand. Uh, and he's nine health, six will. Uh, his deck building, like all the other ones, is only guardian and neutral. Um, yep, yep, up to level five of each. Okay, so right off the bat, he continues in this uh, <laughs> starter investigator trend of having five in his primary stat, so he should be good. But then his ability, talking about de dealing damage by events, makes it less likely for his combat to matter than most Guardians. Uh, well, I mean, there aren't that many combat events um, until now, so it, it kind of depends. I assume there's going to be a bunch in this pack, unless it's mm -hmm. like Winifred. Uh, where <laughs> That's right. Yeah, where the cards have nothing to do with the ability. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if the events that are added require fight tests, then that will be important. Of course, of course, yeah. Um, yeah, it's something that uh, really fight events mm. and damage events, like the first thing that comes to mind is mano a mano, like a historically terrible card, right? And I, <laughs> and I, I feel like we might have even talked about how like it would be nice. Oh, you know when we did our worst cards review? Mm -hmm. I think we might have talked about how, you know, it'd be nice for something to come along to make that valuable. So um, I'm just going to assume that uh, MJ Newman stole that from us <laughs> and, you know, that will be giving us like 50% of the profit. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we basically designed Nathaniel. You're right. So I'm, I'm sure we have royalties coming our way for that. Um, Definitely. Yeah. FFG, I think, I think you got my email. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean... Okay, so his ability is, it's exciting because it immediately sets up an archetype that hasn't existed yet, right? Is like deal, a guardian who deals their damage primarily via events. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that it seems that powerful because you're not going to be throwing, I mean, obviously not having looked at all the new cards in this pack yet. Uh, there are not very many exciting damaging events. Um, you're... Even though it's limit once per phase, like I feel like you're probably even more limited by how many events can you realistically put into your deck and play, right? Mm -hmm. You're only going to get this so many times a game, and then only sometimes is plus one damage useful, right? If the fight's all, if the event's already going to do three and it's a three hit point enemy, this doesn't help. Uh, so I'll be interested to see whether he gets rewarded for overkilling with an asset that he might have, or something to ma maybe make this more consistently use. Yeah, more consistently useful, because right now I see it as as pretty niche. Yeah, so I think obviously with the card pool that existed before this, with just like mano a mano, not not good. Yeah, um, I think uh, if there's a bunch of events, could be better. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else. Even like blood eclipse is another yeah, fight. But He's, fight events, but like damaging events are actually more of a rogue thing than any other class yeah. until I'm sure we're going to see that change here. Yeah, and I guess there's two ways you could take this. Um, 
you could either just put so many events, like if this pack adds so many events that you can just play nothing but events. The other thing is we haven't seen any events that also let you use a weapon. So if, if there was that, mm. that, that could let him do mega damage to a, a oh. boss. If it's like you get to use a weapon and you do plus two from the event and you do plus one from Nathaniel or something. Interesting events that like combo with actions printed on other cards. Yeah, that's not a thing that exists very much other than events that manipulate skill tests. Well, think about like knowledge is power is an event that mm -hmm. triggers a tome. So there's no reason you couldn't have an event that triggers a weapon. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. Sold. Uh, and then before we move on, his oh, Elder uh, Sign effect. Sorry, Marksmanship is an event that triggers a weapon. That, so there's, hmm, good point. There's one. Okay, okay. So we've already got a precedent. Oh, I, I wanted to reread his Elder Sign effect because I have not really thought about it yet. Plus one, if this skill test is successful during an attack, return an event from your discard pile to your hand. Oh, so it doesn't have to be an Elder Sign during an event. It's during yeah, any so fight. It's, it's arguably a little bit better than like Silas and some of the other ones where you return a thing that you were actively doing. This one, there should be plenty of targets. Yeah, this Elder Sign effect seems really good. Um, returning a card of your choice, even from a subset of cards, but from your discard pile is generally a really strong effect that you're happy to get. And then the fact that this can trigger on any attack, it's not quite as good as if it triggered in any context that you draw an Elder Sign, but still, yeah. it's it's better than if it was like if you draw this on an event. So yeah, uh, that, that seems great. And it doesn't have to be an attack event too. I mean, you can literally take emergency cash back. Like, Oh, yeah. Any event returns. Uh, so yeah, it's if it's successful during an attack, return an event. It doesn't have to be an attack event. I see. Huh. So yeah, that seems really strong. Seems worth uh, maybe maybe the Jacqueline tossing you some triple draws to try to get it more often. <laughs> get you your firepower back. Yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, all right. Well, he brings a friend with him. He has a signature ally, Randall Cho. Uh, the it's Randall Cho, Concerned Brother. I'm putting the pieces together. Same last name. It's probably his brother, not just somebody's brother. A two-cost guardian asset that is an ally and a medic, Nathaniel Cho deck only. As a fast action, after Randall Cho enters play, heal three damage or search your deck or discard pile for a weapon asset, play it, paying its cost, and shuffle your deck. Right off the bat, is this a misprint? This should be a reaction, right? Uh oh, yeah, I think you're right. That does it should thing. be the little reaction icon, and I'm unless like, it's, it's unless it's, it's any definitely... time, any time after he enters play, you can trigger this, uh, and he doesn't exhaust. So you know, just constant. After yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> as much as you want, as long as he has entered play at some point. So it follows that in sequence. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to. <laughs> I think it's pretty intuitive to see what this card intends this to be. It's a comes into play effect. I also really like how the art is like the video game meta kit that like restores your HP. Oh yes, yeah, it is. I mean, I I hear that video games are sometimes inspired by real life, so it's kind of a chicken or the egg situation. But no, you're right. It is it is a a very classic like first aid kit <laughs> in this art. Uh, I don't think I finished reading the card, actually. this is It has one health, three sanity, and takes up an ally slot, as you might expect. You got to give this up, Nathaniel. Sooner or later, you're going to get yourself killed. Uh, I assume referring to giving up boxing or criminal yeah. yeah, I mean, every <laughs> every boxer, like, has to take it a little too far. They have to do, like, one more fight after, you know, they've been told mm -hmm. to quit. So makes sense that Nathaniel would as well. Yeah, why even be a boxer if you're not pushing yourself to the brink of death? Um, okay, so heals three damage or searches your deck or discard pile for a weapon asset, plays it, and shuffles your deck. Uh, both effects are really strong. It's They're a little arbitrary to be paired together, right? Like, they're not too... They're, they're, there's two such different things that it seems strange to be like, do one or the other. Well, so that indicates to me that he probably will have weapons that combo with his events, but that maybe there are melee weapons that don't, that like once you get one, you don't need to get a bunch more for Anna. So if you have mm. already drawn the weapon, then you, you do the healing. If you have not drawn the weapon yet, you find the weapon. Right. <clears throat> and you... Which, 
presumably have the resources to pay for it at that time. Yeah. And also, I mean, it kind of makes sense that a boxer would use melee weapons, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and I think when, when, when this was originally previewed, I think we saw boxing gloves that I'm, I don't remember what they do, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be in this deck and how could they not be? I'm to be honest, I'm kind of surprised that his signature asset is not boxing gloves. <laughs> that <laughs> seems like what you would expect it to be, but, uh, no, instead it's his brother and medic. Um, I, I mean, there, there are characters that almost have a de facto, uh, signature card, you know, um, Carolyn, it's like Pete Sylvester, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so like, yeah, maybe boxing gloves are just his de facto, you know, not a, not official signature. Right. Uh, so it's nice to see uh, signature allies are always a little frustrating because the ally slot is so good and they take that up and they make you feel even more like uh, forced than usual to take charisma. But this one at least is a little different. It doesn't really have a persistent effect that you want to remain in play. It is more like a research librarian or a library docent, or I guess these are all seeker cards that normally fill fill this niche. But it's a it's a an ally that you want to play, maximize its effect, and then have it soak up as much damage and horror as it can and get out of the slot. Yeah, uh, I think that's good design. Yeah, yeah. So that is a good fit for a signature ally, and it's and it and it makes it a, a little different. I like it. The only thing that's a little weird is if you draw him and you already are very happy with your ally, the icons are a little weak. I'm kind of surprised there's no fist icons, maybe because he's mm -hmm. like... Well, it has a wild. It has one wild, but I, I feel like having a fist and a wild would be a lot more useful. Um, You're not wrong. It would. And we were, we were talking last time about, about how the icons seem kind of arbitrary sometimes. Um, I guess I mean, it, it, maybe this is to reflect more of Randall Cho's like personality. Yeah, he's like the nerdy. Know. He's the nerdy brother. It looks like I think he's in a wheelchair. So. I think he is. Yeah. So I I can see why there's no fists or agility. Like, but it just makes him a little. Yeah, he's not joining you in the fight. He's standing behind you and encouraging you or healing you or handing you those boxing gloves. Oh. All right. What's his weakness? So, uh, Tommy Malloy uh, is a weakness enemy, 233, three, uh, humanoid, criminal, and syndicate, uh, preys on Nathaniel only, hunter, uh, enforced when Tommy Malloy would take any amount of damage, reduce that amount to one. Uh, they call him the big palooka. Nathaniel calls him scum. Uh, two health damage. The big palooka. I don't get it. <clears throat> I mean, this is surely, surely at some future opportunity, Nathaniel Cho will get a short story in an anthology book or something. The Investigators of Arkham Horror Part 2. Uh, maybe that'll explain that. <laughs> I don't understand this flavor text at all. Yeah. I mean, I, I just have to assume by the laws of, of boxing stories that he asked Nathaniel Cho to throw a match. Like, I feel like there's almost no other reason why criminals ever get involved with boxers. So Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it seems like actually kind of a harsh weakness. Um, it basically takes your whole turn, right? Because you yeah, gotta because ping them three times. It's gonna right. You can accelerate that with uh, actionless damage, like a beat cop, or or if there are fast damage events in this deck. I don't think that there are any prior to now. Uh, so we'll see whether we get any. Uh, that that could kind of speed it up. But yeah, with most action or with most weaknesses, kind of averaging two actions to clear. This one seems rougher than that. Yep. Um, but those actions, unlike a lot of weaknesses, those actions can be split up. Or if you need to, one of your one of the other players can do one, and you can do the other two, or something like that. So it, it does have that flexibility. Yeah. And it, if you are playing things like evidence and scene of the crime that benefit from having enemies around or killing enemies, could be good too. Ah, uh, that's true. Yeah. Enemy weakness does synergize with scene of the crime. That's that's a silver lining. Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> okay, he has one more weakness. It is the basic weakness that came in the pack. These have been kind of gentle so far. So let's see see about this one. Uh, self destructive. It's a flaw. Revelation. <clears throat> Put it into your threat area. Forced. When you deal one or more damage to an enemy, take one damage. And double action. Discard self destructive. 
Yeah, this seems also quite gentle to me. This seems l situationally worse, but in general, I would rather have this in an internal injury because you have the option to just spend your turn doing something that is not fighting or clearing this and not take damage. On the yeah, flip side, if you I, if you really need to fight three times, this is this is rough. Yeah, I mean, if you have to, if you have an enemy on you and you can't get one of your allies to click this off for you, then uh, hopefully you can deal with that enemy in a single attack. Because um, right. it's you can be if you can like combo an event with a vicious blow or something like that and do four or five damage. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you can kill the enemy in one action. And only take one damage. Yeah, this is also one of those that it's it's a it's a temptation because if there are just no enemies on the board, you know, it's this isn't really hurting, right? You can, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can but afford if, to spend your turn gaining some resources and drawing oh, some cards on. and worry about it later. If there are no enemies on the board, it's a great time for a guardian to like waste their time doing something else. Come on, yeah, like drawing cards. Why would you clear this? This is <laughs> this isn't hurting you. Not at all. <laughs> uh, my other thought, this is, I think, more than most basic weaknesses is for certain investigators or for certain roles on the team, this is just nothing. Like, if you're Seeker, who is maybe Seeker in a multiplayer game where they've built around, like, I'm barely doing a single point of damage. I'm just getting clues, clues, clues. Like, this might as well be a blank weakness. Yeah, and I think we've seen some other ones that were like that, where it's like really only applies to the character who gets it or, or similar mm -hmm. characters. So I do think some of these new ones, um, I'll play them with the investigator and maybe I'll include them in my random, but I'll probably redraw them half the time. Like, I think, yeah, if I was playing Ursula or something and I threw this, like, I'm just going to redraw. Like, it's not. Yeah, that's I'm, just not fun. <laughs> Uh, my other thought is that I think it's a nod to Raging Bull, where Robert, De which is a boxing movie with Robert De Niro that has a very famous monologue to a mirror. So I don't oh. know that the mirror being broken here. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's a good call out. I was noting that this is, I think, the first one that doesn't uh, seem to feature the character of the deck in the art. Uh, the Harvey one was arguable. The art style was different enough that <laughs> that we debated it, uh, yeah. but. This one, I just figured, is more like a moment from Nathaniel's story or personality. But you're right. It might be a boxing movie reference. There's a lot of boxing movies, so I could see there being a lot of references in here. Yep. Well, so the next one is the boxing gloves that we just talked about. Uh, a 3 top right. asset, uh, item and weapon, uh, and interesting. So it has a passive effect. You get plus one uh, fist while fighting. Oh. Uh, and a reaction. After you defeat an enemy, exhaust boxing gloves to search the top six cards of your deck for a spirit event and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. So it's not, I, I was speculating that they could make events that would let you trigger weapons. Right. This is sort of the opposite. It's a weapon with a passive effect that can combo with events. Yeah, it's a magnifying glass for punching things. <laughs> it's it's actually it's a it's it's a passive stat boost f for fighting only kind of kind of like uh plus one intellect while investigating um this seems great the big downside to me is it's two hands so you cannot wear without something like a bandolier which a bandolier making sense with boxing gloves is maybe questionable but <laughs> uh you can't have this like and a gun. You you can't have boxing gloves for the plus one and a gun for those times when you really need to do multiple damage. Uh, so yeah, it does seem maybe not surprisingly like this is meant to combo with damaging events. Yeah. So I wonder if it'll turn out that Nathaniel is best in the way that it seems like they're leading us towards, which is like you don't use traditional weapons; you only box in events. Mm -hmm. Or if actually like bandolier cheese and like shooting someone and using your boxing gloves to like pull out a mano a mano is actually better, which of course <laughs> is like makes no sense thematically, but like, I don't know, maybe that actually will be better. So it, it'll be, it'll be kind of interesting to see. Yeah, agreed. Because you combo a leveled up bandolier with this and you've got two stat boosts right there, right? Like that's willpower and combat. That's pretty strong. Yeah, and the weapon would give you a stat boost as well. So, like the the gun or a chance right. or whatever that you 
Yeah, and then also these boxing gloves don't require you to have used an event or anything. So if you're wearing boxing gloves and holding a lightning gun, you <laughs> I don't know how you pull the trigger, but you do get to search for an event and add it to your uh, hand. So, and spirit events are, that's like most of the good guardian stuff. So uh, I've had worse, let me handle mm. this. Um, they're not all fight, like stand together is a spirit and that's a great one. That's actually uh, the only one that came to mind. I was thinking like, I don't think I've ever cared much about the spirit trait. So whenever a trait is rewarded for like one of the first times, it's always hard to know off the top of your head what all the cards are with that trait. Uh, so mano a mano, um, monster. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, the, the the mighty monster slayer. Uh, if you want to spend five XP to defeat a non elite enemy, oh, uh, it's it's, it's defeat the enemy plus one damage. Thanks to Nathaniel, right? Is that yep. yeah, that yeah, must be one more than defeat. <laughs> um, and then, if you want to play this in a multi class investigator, uh, Ward of Protection is a spirit. So Ooh. you know, Diana Diana could box someone and then get Ward. Oh, um, I love boxing Diana. That's a fantastic idea. <laughs> she she also needs the bandolier so she can use her signature weapon and stuff. But hey, bandolier is great for her. The willpower boost. Yep, totally. Uh, oh, yeah. If you want to play like Yorick and do Survivor and Guardian, Fight or Flight, Test of Will, um, Against All Odds. Uh, it's there's almost a like lot. you have these. It's almost like you have these in a list in front of you. What? No, <laughs> I have a really really good memory. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay, so tonight I learned there are a lot of spirit traded events. Oh, uncage the soul. That's another one Diana can do. Ooh, true. Um, okay, yeah, it, it makes. Well, I mean, I guess it makes thematic sense for both mystics and guardians. It's kind of representing different things. I mean, maybe <laughs> when, when something is spirit traded in mystic, I'm like, you are channeling spirits. Versus when it's spirit traded in a guardian, I'm thinking it is a representation of your fighting spirit. Uh, but hey, boxing gloves work for both, I guess. Uh, okay, wow. Speaking of channeling fighting spirits, uh, up next is Flesh Ward. It is a ritual. It's a guardian asset that costs three resources. It uses four charges and says... As a reaction, when you are dealt damage and or horror from an enemy attack, exhaust Flesh Ward and spend one charge. Cancel one damage or horror just dealt from that attack. And it sits in an arcane slot. Oh, and it itself has one health, one sanity. Uh, There's a lot this, going on there. The, it, yeah, there is. It seems like one of the best, especially for a level zero card, one of the best protective assets I've seen. Yeah, so, um, so best case scenario, it prevents six damage, but with a bunch of caveats that the first four have to be like spread out over separate turns, mm -hmm. but then the last two have to be one damage and one horror. So probably not getting six, but could still get some. Right. Um, still, five is a lot. <laughs> Uh, it sits in a slot that Guardians sure don't care much about. And yeah, it's just going to come down to how much damage and horror, like how, or rather how many enemy attacks are you finding yourself take, right? Because most, most games, I don't feel like I get attacked four times, right? Because generally you're trying to evade the enemies or kill them before they get a, a turn and you're I not soaking that many hits. I didn't actually notice the enemy attack part. I think it's actually bad now because yeah. Nathaniel's a 9-6. You expect what's going to kill him is going to be horror from Mythos cards. Yeah. Um, so Although I would, he, he's got decent willpower. I'll give him that. But but still, like he's a 9-6 who's great at fighting. Like my, I If I'm going to put in uh, prevention or healing cards, I want to help me deal with horror from Mythos cards. Yeah. Yeah. And this does prevent horror from enemy attacks, but. Just kill the enemies. That prevents it. Yeah. Right. Um, hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, some Guardian cards point towards a really. T I, and I mean, since the days of Brother Xavier, the first, like, now it's a thing that multiple. A, a variety of Guardian cards let you take damage and horror for other people at your location. 
Um, this doesn't really synergize with that, I guess, unless you're taking, I mean, yeah, does this, okay. How does this combo with Brother Xavier? Say Brother Xavier lets you take damage or horror from an enemy attack against another player. Can that then be routed or canceled via this? No. Hmm. No, because you you are not being dealt damage or horror. It's that Brother Z it's that damage and horror dealt to someone else is being placed on Brother Xavier. Yes, he can be assigned damage. So hmm. I think it's more like he's being lent to the other players on that. Yeah. Turn. So there's so this doesn't really combo with like the the kind of tanking for your team thing no, in it, any way that I can think of. It, I mean, you could take it in a kind of weak, like Dunwich investigator, like a Rex or something that was worried about enemies maybe because mm. um, it is level zero. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Seemed better on the first read. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? All right. Uh, ooh, new ally. Yeah. Uh, Gret Wagner, the Purifier. Five cost, um, book and fist, ally and hunter. You get plus one fight, so that's kind of a theme so far. Uh, and as a reaction, after you defeat an enemy, exhaust Gret and deal one damage to her, discover one clue at your location. And three health, two sanity. Um, with iron and salt, with water and fire. So she's a five cost ally that bo boosts your combat and can discover two clues, basically, right? Unless uh, you unless no. you take her out with a third one. Yeah, which I mean, people do that with B cops all the time. Like I, they do, but B cop can be done anytime. This is when you defeat an enemy, and also killing an enemy is a little more urgent. Than getting a clue usually for guardians like giving up your combat boost to get a clue seems like something you're not going to want to do that often yeah i mean i do think though that this kind of compares favorably like i my my thoughts actually went to b cup two when i saw this because mm -hmm. like uh it, the much higher health and sanity than b cup one the fact that you can use it multiple times like the fact that this is zero xp um and kind of comparable to beat cop 2 does cost one more um does seem pretty strong hmm so this is she's she's roland huh this is just roland's power after he defeats an enemy discover a clue at his location just yeah <laughs> she does it twice except with her your fight is six whereas roland has a fight of four yeah I don't like her. Um, I think I would only play her in true solo, which I almost never play. When you're needing to build a deck that can kill enemies and discover clues, because there's no one else to do either of those things for you, then I can see playing this. I'm not really seeing it any other time. I think it would be beat cop over her every time. And even you'd spend the XP early on to get beat cop level two over keeping her level zero. I think I would seriously consider her over beat cop zero. Um, I also think we'll have to see how much money Nathaniel has um, and, and or if you want to combine it with non-Nathaniel cards like Stand Together that are good at generating money. Um, mm -hmm. Because if theoretically, like if you can make $10, you could play two of these to discover six clues um, and then you are a pretty decent clover. So like that could be another reason to kill her off to get the third clue would be if you've drawn another one. Yeah, 10 resources two cards, two actions, and having to jump through the hoops of defeating six enemies to get six clues. That's, well, that's six steep. enemies, that's, that's no problem. <laughs> six enemies while there are clues on those locations. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm not sold. I am curious whether she has a leveled up version in the upgraded, upgrade cards in Nathaniel's pack, because I think most of the new allies that have introduced been introduced have gotten an upgraded version, so... If there's, say, a level two Gret Wagner that we can then compare apples to apples with Beat Cop level two, I'm I'll be interested to see that. But I think until then, it's it's a nope from me. Uh, speaking of a nope from me, <laughs> it looks like regular old physical training is in this pack. Is this is a core set card, right? Uh, yeah. Did they this not? Is, 
Did they not this change is, anything? No, this is the regular level zero. It's too like we've seen some tweaks on talent cards in some of these packs, but this is the regular corset one, which strikes me as a little bit of a strange inclusion because everyone who plays Arkham has those. I mean, I guess I guess we've seen other things like deduction and like I guess that's I guess that's not a I guess that's not something they were necessarily avoiding, but huh. Um sure. All right. Uh if you're sitting on a lot of resources, which guardians aren't usually, and I would expect definitely expect Nathaniel not to be because he's probably paying for all those events that we're gonna get to eventually. Um no, I don't know why this is here. What's next? Yeah. <laughs> um so no, feel free to finish your thought if I if I cut you off there. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I, I think I'd rather spend it on Gret Wagner, like if we're doing expensive things. So I'm yeah, uh, agreed. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Spending five on a static boost is probably better than spending two on the ability to spend more money <laughs> for <laughs> for temporary boosts. It's just a hard. It, it's not a card that has been very good since we had a, a slightly larger card pool than the core set. And I think it's not good here. Um, so next is Relentless, a zero cost asset with a fist and an agility. Uh, it's a talent and as a reaction, when you deal excess damage to an enemy, exhaust Relentless, place that excess damage on Relentless, and as a fast action, discard Relentless, gain resources equal to the amount of damage on it. Okay, first let me say, called it. Possibly my first correct prediction in the history of <laughs> these videos. <laughs> he does have an asset that rewards dealing excess damage, which makes his ability more reliably useful, which is great. I love that. What this do you think of the card itself? This card is awful. Like, really? It is so bad. Oh. Um, have you have you played with the weaknesses that require you to get like extra clues and extra damage and stuff? Yeah, those like hidden cards that were in Return to Carcosa or something like that. Yeah, it it they're kind of a pain. Like it takes you. They're not the worst weaknesses, but it definitely like will take you a few turns often to find a good opportunity to do that extra damage. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not something that's like easy to do every single turn. Um, yeah. So like, I see this as something where you probably get two or three resources out of it over seven or eight turns, which is just really, really bad compared to emergency cash as you like to compare cards. Or, yeah, or, I mean, it's a road card, but investments. Oh, investments, yeah. So you much better than this. Like eight, <laughs> eight resources. Um, and wow, I just reread this. You have to exhaust this to place the excess damage on it. So you can't even kill two enemies in, with excess damage in one round. Although maybe that's a niche situation anyway, but that just seems to add insult to injury here that it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't let you do that. Uh, I guess, so the one I, the one thing I missed is that uh, it does also place all the excess damage though. So like mm -hmm. if for some reason you wanted to do like this and uh, some rogue and do some weird janky, like quick thinking, double or nothing, watch this, like, Oh, oh, but no, that just succeeds by that amount. It doesn't actually do that much damage. So yeah, you needed like a shotgun in there that deals up to five damage. Depending yeah, on how much you succeed by double or nothing that <laughs> take it Which, up to ten. But like, and then it's like, why are you committing like <laughs> yeah. ten cards to make this money instead of spending ten cards to actually defeat the boss of the scenario? Yeah, why? <laughs> why did the rogue help you with multiple parts of that combo rather than just invest in a hot streak or something to get that money right? <laughs> Um, I want to glance at his weakness enemy, the Tommy Malloy. Yeah, no. So when the, the way this is worded, when this would take any amount of damage, reduce that to one. So it's. I was wondering whether damage beyond the first would be considered excess damage here, but I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's how these interact. So, so the only thing I could see making this maybe playable is that it would draw a card from Mark. Um, and uh, now with Practice Makes Perfect, you can do his crazy signature twice because you can like find it with Practice Makes Perfect. Sorry, back up. Why would it draw a card for Mark? Because you place a damage on it. Oh, it triggers whenever damage gets placed on a, a card of his? Yeah. Is that, I, I had forgotten that. Okay. Yeah. It I've always just thought of it as like whenever he takes damage, but this. It, it does not convert the damage into resources. Yeah, it, you're placing the damage on Relentless. 
so, that's a weird interaction, but okay, sure. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, and you can use practice makes perfect to do his like crazy home front twice now because hmm. you use it once with practice makes perfect and then it goes to your hand and you use it again. And that does a lot of damage. So like maybe there's some scenario where Mark does damage, does like an extra damage like three or four times during a scenario and draws three or four cards in addition to three resources. Like it's like, okay. I don't think it's amazing. Um, but that's the only use I can think of. Yeah. All right. Um, we're almost to the end of the assets. I would not say that I've been very sold on much other than the boxing gloves. So. Yeah. And even the boxing gloves, we haven't actually, well, I guess we haven't gotten to events yet. So I was going to say, we haven't actually seen like what uh, kind of fighting events. We'll yeah. Use. Presumably there are spirit events in here that will make the boxing gloves even more exciting. So. That is uh, that is something to look forward to. First, there is level zero safeguard. Um, okay, so so relentless. After physical training and relentless, he has a third talent, and I think this one might actually be good because <laughs> this is a level zero version of a card we've seen before. It's a talent. It costs two resources, takes no slot, and it says, after another investigator moves from your location to a connecting location, exhaust safeguard, move to that location. So I believe the higher level safeguard, and it's level two, I forget what level it is, but the importantly is uh, when you trigger it, you get to s move with that investigator for the rest of their turn or the yeah. rest of the round, something like that. And this is just going to move you one time. But a lot of the time, that's just as good. Yeah, I mean, Pathfinder only moves you one space. Like, yeah. I still think this is really good. I'd say so, yeah. And... It, guardians love being with their allies because enemies follow people and you don't want them following the seeker who's across the map. So this helps you stay with them. Yeah, and just in case you're a newer player or something, one of the many reasons why Safeguard is amazing is that when the Guardian and the other character move to the new spot, the Guardian can choose to engage enemies. So yes. it's like, let Seekers go and just get clues and not worry about enemies. Uh, and so this still has that really awesome effect. Does it? The way it's worded, after another investigator moves? From from your location. So it's after they move from, but you actually arrive to the location at the same time, I think. Really? When it's worded after like this, I thought it resolves after the thing that triggers it resolves. How does that compare to the way the other one is worded? Oh, it does say as they move. Oh, you're right. Maybe it is different. Yeah. So I think this version lacks that aspect. Okay. You're absolutely right. That's a big part of why the original, the higher level one, is so good. So, okay, so this is dramatically worse. I think this is still a decent card because it's great action economy. Um, yeah. But you'll if you, if this is in your deck, you're gonna be eyeing an opportunity to level up to the better dis, better safeguard, you know, a fairly high priority, I think, because it's, it's a lot even better. Yeah, that's true. This does make it substantially worse, but I think both versions are still good. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the lesson that FFG is trying to teach us is that while you may have many talents, there's really like one you should stick with. Like, just <laughs> yeah. find the talent that's actually good and just go with that and cut the rest out. Specialize, yeah, yeah. Arkham really doesn't reward jacks of all trades that much, does it? I mean, like Jenny's all right, I guess. Lola, not so much. Yeah. All right, I'm excited. We're finally to the event part of this pack. What do we got? All right, Clean Them Out uh, is a zero-cost Guardian event. That's a good Spirit. name. For, let me, I, I, <laughs> I know I'm interrupting, but I, I love it just based on its name. That's a great name for a card. Yeah, right. and it, it looks like it might be a, a lady like mugging someone or something to clean them out. I don't know. We're yes. putting them in a headlock. Um, <laughs> cool. It's a spear and a tactic. Uh, and fight, when this action begins, gain two resources. Uh, oh, we saw this card in other classes. Yeah, I think the only reason why this might be even better uh, is it has two combos with Nathaniel. It has the mm -hmm. spirit combo with boxing gloves, and it is a fight, so it combos with Nathaniel himself. So I think that's the most synergy we've seen in all of these versions. Yeah, so agreed. This is roughly an emergency cash in effectiveness because it takes it gives you plus two where an emergency cash also gives you plus two versus just gaining a resource uh nathaniel's ability gives it an additional damage and boxing gloves can help you find it 
uh, for free. What's that trigger again? It's after you defeat an enemy. Yeah, yeah. But it's not an action. Uh, this seems real good and an obvious include in Nathaniel decks forever. Yeah, I think it's just auto include. Don't have much more to say. No, me neither. So, but uh, but yeah, don't let the short conversation make it sound like it's not good or dis or it's disappointing because it's it's great. All right, then we get oh hey, an actual boxing themed event, Counter Punch. It's a zero cost guardian event. It's a spirit and a tactic as well. It says fast play after an enemy attacks you, even if that attack was canceled. So you can dodge and counter punch. I like that. Uh, fight. This attack targets the attacking enemy. So it's a little survival knife in an event yeah. kind of thing, right? Where it, it deals a blow back from an attack. Interestingly, so, this gives you a reason to kind of want to be attacked, which then gives Flesh Ward a little bit more purpose than it had, right? Because the Flesh Ward can prevent some of that damage or horror. That's true. Yeah, if you're going to go really heavy on counter punching, like I don't know if well, I guess his Elder Sign has a ways to reuse events, so maybe mm -hmm. you're going to counter punch three or four times. Um, then you might need some damage cancellation. What do you think? Uh, so I mean, on like aside from the requirements, like a fast event that basically gives you an action um, is at least for him where the action does two damage is very good. I mean, normally. Mm -hmm. Things that give you an action cost at least, you know, generally cost uh, some resources. I guess shortcut doesn't. Um, so the fact that it combos with his ability does make it pretty good. I think outside of Nathaniel uh, putting a card slot in to just like do one damage situationally is not uh, not something you consider. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think the only other place I could see this going is Zoe, just because she. I think more, I was saying it's not that much of a thing, but more than most Zoe might do do what some Guardian cards point to, which is like tank a bunch of enemies and take some attacks in the process because she gets rewarded with resources as she engages them all. Um, so I could, I could see this fitting into a Zoe build, but I think it's definitely tailor-made for Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it seems all right. Not doesn't blow me away. Mm -hmm. Um. Next card, get over here. Uh, two cost events. Spirit. Oh, you, uh, since oh, you're, did you're, I? you're looking at this on a screen, you skipped over a reprint. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah. So there's, uh, there's Dodge in here, actually. Oh. And, okay. and, uh, yeah. So this makes perfect sense. Well, it's not a fight event or a damaging event. So it doesn't actually synergize with Nathaniel. I think it makes perfect thematic sense for a boxer to have dodging being in his repertoire, right? So yeah. I ain't mad that it's here, and I think it's fine in his deck. Yeah, it's also kind of funny they put it next to Counterpunch, so. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's the first thing that came to mind, because I think, I'm pretty sure dodge and Counterpunch is like is a thing. That's a phrase that describes a boxing maneuver. I, I, I don't, dodge and weave would be like the classic. I thought um, that's bob and weave. Or maybe bob and weave, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if dodge and counterpunch actually gets used that much together, but it does make sense. Come to Optimal Play for all of your boxing expertise. <laughs> <laughs> all right, as you were saying. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so get over here is a two cost uh, event, spirit and tactic. Seems to be mm -hmm. a theme so far. Uh, is dodge uh, spirit and tactic? No, right? it's not a spirit. It's just a tactic. Oh, so kind of it. Yeah. It also doesn't work with boxing gloves. Yeah, probably not something I would put in Nathaniel's deck building it myself, but I think it makes thematic sense. So again, I'm not mad. So get over here uh, is engage and fight. That's a really interesting uh, hmm. combination. Um, and choose a non-elite enemy at your location or a connecting location. Move that enemy to your location, engage it, and attack it. Weird. OK. Let me clarify here the the engage and the fight are just they're just those uh what do they call they're just tags right they in this case they don't do anything they just specify that this is an engage action and a fight action for the purposes of any ways that that matters because it, it's not like this engages and fights and does this third effect right yeah it's a little weird so like the fact that it says fight is part of why um, like Nathaniel's ability gives it plus one. Mm -hmm. 
The engage part might clarify that you don't take attacks of opportunity or something. Although fight already does makes you not take attacks of opportunity, I think, right? Yeah, right, right. Um, engage does take attacks of opportunity. Fight does not. But um, yeah, so I think the engage action is like the one that the game cares about the least often that you're that you're doing. I guess maybe it means that Zoe, well, no, Zoe's ability triggers whenever she becomes engaged, so I don't think it matters. So I think that this is a lesson that I learned from Astral Travel is the first card I can think of that that is templated this way. Astral Travel, as I recall, says move, period. Move to any location, like, and then goes on to describe the move. And it doesn't yeah. mean make a move and then do the rest of the text in addition. It just is calling out that what you're doing is considered by the game to be a move. Mm -hmm. um, I think that this is weird because if you look back at like clean them out, which says fight when this action begins, in this case, the word fight is telling you to fight. Whereas this isn't telling you to fight. It's just telling you that what the rest of the text says is a fight. Yeah. Also, I mean, the card that this is most similar to, Taunt, does not put engage in bold at the beginning. Um, True. So hmm. it's a little confusing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I would call this, I, like, I think I get what the game is trying to do, but I think the templating is confusing. That said, at this point, I need to like reread the card to see what it actually does. So it chooses an enemy at your location or connecting location, moves it to you, engages it, and attacks it. So it's kind of like a, uh, it's it's a little like a taunt and a, well, it's like a taunt with a built-in fight, right? Well, it, but it, the fact that it moves from a connecting location is I think the big thing. Like, right. I, I don't think you're gonna use it that often if they're not, if they're at your location. Um, but it could help your teammates out of certain kind of specific jams that might otherwise be tough. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's it's a pretty common jam is that there's a hunter enemy one location away and you don't want to let it move on to you and because it, then it gets to attack first. But you also don't have time or, or would rather not spend an action moving on to it. And so this solves that problem. That that is like a that happens most games, right? That you're like wishing that that hunter enemy you had some way to like have all three actions with that hunter enemy. Um, so for for that situation, which I think is not not uncommon, this seems good. It's a pretty expensive way to deal with that, though. Like yeah. you're saving an action at the cost of two, and you're not able to use a weapon uh, other than obviously boxing gloves. Um, so it's yeah, and I think that's I think that's the right price for the card. Like that's what it, that's what an action usually costs, right? <laughs> if you look at all the rogue cards that like convert money to actions and things, that seems right. Hmm. I think it's okay. Um, definitely only in Nathaniel. Like I think yeah. that like a lot of these ones that just do a fight with no extra damage, it's very hard to justify outside of Nathaniel. Um, but I think it's okay in him. Yeah, when this does everything, it says and is a two damage fight that can take out a lot of adjacent uh, adjacent enemies without having to go chase them down. Um, it's also, you know, just th thinking about other times I'd be glad to have it. Maybe there's an Acolyte with a Doom on it in like a dead end location that you'd rather not have to go there, fight it and come back. Like this saves you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's certainly interesting. Um, oh, another thing, maybe they're trying to set up uh, Nathaniel as a grenade chucker because <laughs> grenades don't take a hand slot, so you can do them with the boxing gloves, and you can use this to get all the enemies to your location. Um, so maybe like grenade chucking Nathaniel is is where they want you to go. That is a very funny image. The, <laughs> the boxer who just when the going gets tough whips out his belt <laughs> of grenades <laughs> and starts. Well, it's not even you're not wrong. wrong. It's not even when the going gets tough. It's that he's actually like starts taunting all these enemies and it's like, oh, you know, you're a pussy. Get over here. You, you couldn't take me. And then it's just like, just kidding. Yeah, I have to yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> all right. Oh, man. This is another boxing ass card. Uh, <laughs> it's a one cost guardian event called Glory, and it's a spirit traded uh, event it says fast 
play after you defeat an enemy, draw two cards. <laughs> Flavor text, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> uh, super thematic, awesome fit for like the boxer's deck. I love the, I love the theme on this card. Mm, I don't think I like the card. So it's, I mean, it's pretty versatile in that uh, you're going to defeat a lot of enemies. Um, mm -hmm. And if for some reason you don't want to draw two cards, it is a double icon. Um, yeah. Not his most important stat, but like maybe there is times when he wants to investigate. Um, and that's easy enough if you add two to make him four. Mm -hmm. um, so at least it's versatile. Yeah, I think it's the resource cost that throws me a little bit. So this costs you a resource and a card to draw two cards, which is like e efficiency-wise breaking even is all that it is. Well, except uh, unless you find it with boxing gloves. Oh, no, that's true. It's a spirit. Then... So yeah, the, the card draw can be can be a freebie. Um, to me, it's a no-brainer to put into Daniel's deck just because it's so perfect a moment for a boxer to have. <laughs> like, I, I want to defeat an enemy, sh literally shout ding, 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 annoying the rest of my team and throw this on the table. Like, I think that that, that is super fun. <laughs> but I don't think the card really uh, impresses me otherwise. So aside from the thematic fun, though, are, do you ever play Dominion? You mm -hmm. play? So you know the obnoxious guy that has the like 10 minute turn where they play a card that draws a card that plays a card that draws a card. And oh, it's, I know, really, it's, incredibly, I know guy, yeah. it's incredibly fun for them. <laughs> and it's incredibly obnoxious for everyone else. Um, I do feel like this has that potential where you like boxing gloves into glory and then you glory into evidence or something and you just have this like crazy turn where like everything leads to something else. Um, and I think that will be really fun when you pull it off. <laughs> fun for only you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's actually, but, but you actually raised a point that I hadn't thought of that the timing works that you can defeat an enemy, use your boxing gloves to, to look for an event from your deck because you defeated an enemy. And then if you find glory, immediately play it. That does work. And then if you find evidence or something with glory, play that. Sure. Okay. That makes us that makes us more interesting. You're right. If only because that will be a very fun moment for you. <laughs> All right, we still we got even more events. Oh god. You uh you invoked this upon us. Ooh, Monster Slayer. Yeah. Uh, zero cost event, zero XP this time. Now I think it would be hilarious if they just reprinted the original Monster Slayer with zero XP um, to admit how bad it was. <laughs> Uh, but the actual text of this, it's a wild, uh, it's wild icon, it's spirit, and then it says fight, this attack deals plus one damage. So not not quite the same as the original, but... Yeah, it's honestly so different from the original that, and the original is so unplayable that it's not even really worth talking about, like, how is this different? I, I kind of just want to, like, look at this as, it's a whole new card, cool. Um... I think it's a good card for Nathaniel. This becomes a three damage attack. Yep. And it's a spirit, so he can find it with his boxing gloves. Seems very good. Um, I don't think most other investigators would take this unless they were also playing boxing gloves, I guess. But for the most part, guardians want to be using weapons that are getting plus damage anyway. And this doesn't combo with them to do even more damage. And so I don't think it would go in their decks. Yeah, so if you compare this to Vicious Blow, um, in Nathaniel, this is three damage and Vicious Blow is two damage. But in a regular Guardian with like a machete, Vicious Blow is three damage and this is two damage. So it's kind yeah. of the exact reverse. Right. Hmm. Okay, so I mean, one more investigator likes this card than likes the level five version. <laughs> so, so there's that. Definitely. Um, and, and Vicious Blow is really good. So, like, I don't know, maybe some other Guardians would take it, but they certainly wouldn't take it over Vicious Blow. I mean, yeah, any time that I drew this as another Guardian, like, the only time that it would be good, I think, would be if I didn't have a weapon in play. Yeah. Like, it was the start of the game and I hadn't gotten one yet, or I ran out of ammo. And then in that case, it would have been better if this had just been a weapon, and I would have been better served adding more weapons to my deck instead of this. Yeah, it's got a wild icon, but other than that, yeah, I think it's just a Nathaniel card. Uh, the uh, 
the hits just keep coming with one two punch it's a two cost guardian event it's a spirit and a tactic it says fight you get plus one combat for this attack if you succeed you may fight that enemy again you get plus two combat and deal plus one damage for that attack nathaniel is renowned for his rapid left jab and right cross signature move so this does with nothing else going on and if you're nathaniel this does up to four damage if you hit yeah. both hits, right? Because the first one gets plus one from him, and that is once per phase. So, so the second part of this would not get plus one. Yeah. Um. Although, in worst case scenario, like if you miss on the first part, draw an auto fail. His ability does get to apply to the next one because it only triggers when you deal damage. The next one doesn't happen at all if you miss. Um, oh, if you succeed, you're right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So that th that is, I think mm. this is a very strong card. The one. Thing you have to worry about is that you might think oh i'm not going to like commit and overpower to this first test because it's not as important it doesn't do any extra damage but you actually do have to make sure that the first one succeeds even though you might only really care about the second one right um yeah i think this is yet another one and we kind of thought that this would be the case early on i think this is another one i'd only play in nathaniel I think two resources and having to pass two tests to get a total of three damage. While three damage is not is nothing to like raise your nose at, there's just better ways to do it, like weapons. Yeah, but uh, four damage, though, is I, I for two costs. While mm -hmm. good over here is, I think, situationally great, I think this one, I would almost always pay two costs to defeat a four, four uh, HP enemy in one hit. Yep. yep, and with yep. with boxing gloves as his only stat boost, he's testing. He's at seven and eight combat, so like his, uh, his skill is great. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so his skills at a great spot for this. Other guardians that might have four combat like have to find more kind of static boosts to then have this event be particularly likely to hit tough enemies. Yeah, I think it's only for him, but I think it makes sense in his deck. Yeah, very cool. Um, and then uh, we have Stand Together level zero. Oh, uh, it's a spirit. Uh, so, so this is a spirit. Um, and choose another investigator location. Both you and that investigator gain two resources. Uh, I, I think the, I was saying that spirit can mean one of two things, like your your inner fortitude or conjuring spirits. This one seems to be both. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know. I think it's. I think it's the inner fortitude, right? Isn't it? Uh, you're inspiring this other person that, like, hey, we're gonna be okay. But there's a literal translucent spirit in the art. I I, I thought that was an enemy spirit. You think? Oh, that's a good spirit. I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess you're right. I've always thought that was, like, and you know, I guess I've never really thought critically about this art because. It's a card that requires you to be with another investigator. So kind of like mechanically, there are two actual people there. Yet the art is one person and a ghost. I guess I, guess I don't really understand that now that I think about it. <laughs> but OK, well, let's not think too hard about it. Uh, I think this card is great. Yeah, so the, the original also gave you two cards, which is obviously super strong. And but... it's level three, right? Yeah, it's level three. So a lot more characters can take this. Uh, you can t start with it. Yeah, I mean, so for level zero, like this is, especially without the card draw, it's another card that's a clear variant on emergency cash, which, slight tangent, I think it's actually super cool that we're getting a whole lot of new cards that kind of compare like uh, fairly evenly with emergency cash. Maybe we can stop putting two emergency cash as the first two cards into every deck and kind of consider a few options that fill that slot. So I think that's actually super exciting. And then this, in multiplayer, uh, this is often just four resources for the team. Uh, so, like, if you if you, the other person already has 15 resources, <laughs> two of them maybe aren't useful. But most of the time, this is something that is going to be better to the team and advance you closer to victory than Emergency Cash does. I think it's great. And it's also worth pointing out, in three and four player, you have you get to ask all your teammates who needs two more resources. So then there's a really good chance that someone needs it. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes someone has an amazing starting hand, but it's like eight co it's eight resources worth. And if someone else can give you two, really good. You're right. Yeah, being able to it so yeah, this is something you would mulligan for really hard. 
Because yeah. even emergency cash is already something that's great in your opening hand. This is even more so because if it's in your opening hand, you'll also be lined up with all your allies, at, all, all the other players at your location. Uh, most of the, there's some scenarios are exceptions to that, but for the most part, uh, this is yeah. This is great, and it, it, it's a spirit. So bo boxing gloves inexplicably can can find this. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe it makes sense though. It's like you get this confidence from boxing your enemy that you then pass on to your ally. It's like, hey, you saw me kill that guy. Like, I can protect you. Like, chill out. Sure. Yeah, that's. I buy that. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, we're down to the last card. It looks like it's the only skill card in Nathaniel's deck, but it's one that needed to be here. It's Vicious Blow. So this is the core set card that is a combat icon. When a skill test is successful during an attack, it deals plus one damage. This card goes in every Guardian deck. We kind of said with deduction, like, it's a card that every Seeker should play. It's honestly overpowered, but not in a game-breaking way, just in a way that kind of makes Seekers good at clues, which they should be. That's kind of where I'm at on this, too. It just makes Guardians good at damage, which they should be. Uh, it's it's a little bit of a downside to me for in from a game design perspective that it's just such an, such an all-auto-include, but I think it's otherwise healthy. Any any strong thoughts on Vicious Blow? Yeah, I mean, if, if anyone could get away with uh, not having it, it would be Nathaniel, but I think he's still hmm. with it. Yeah, I think... But I think he, I don't know. I think it maybe is even more crucial for him because he doesn't have the flexibility that other investigators have of which weapon do I use? Could, should I just attack twice? Like when he's using fight events so much, maybe he only has one. And well, but you, you could choose between punching versus using an event. Yeah. And he has like Monster Slayer does three, one, two punch does four. So he just has some flexibility there. Yeah, that's true. Um, and hey, this can deal an extra excess damage to go on Relentless. <laughs> that point, that's the reason to include Vicious Blow. Convert your Vicious Blow to one resource. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that was it. Uh, I I know I said up front that I'm a, I'm a Guardian fan. Um, I'm really excited. I think I, I loved what I saw here. Yeah, I think we saw with Jacqueline uh, that... It was just maybe a little more samey uh, to regular Mystics than mm -hmm. I was super excited about. I think we saw with Winifred that the cards didn't quite synergize with her ability quite as much as we wanted. Uh, I think with Harvey, they we also felt like they, or at least I felt like they didn't synergize well with his weakness. That it's like, oh man, it's all about having a huge hand size, but his weakness is really bad with that. Yeah. Um, I actually think this is the best one so far and having like a really unique style and yeah. the cards, aside from a couple of them, like maybe you don't need Relentless in physical training, like most of the cards synergize with this ability really well. Yeah. And I think even the ones that are bad in his deck, like the ones you listed, they make sense thematically. <laughs> physical training, like it doesn't that... And actually, I didn't... Yeah. I, know, yeah. A we did, I, I didn't really key in on this when we talked about physical training, but it literally has a woman boxing a punching bag uh, so, like, of course it had to be in here, I guess. <laughs> it's it's going to be how you spend your first experience with the Nathaniel pack is getting it the heck out and upgrading to something else with that card slot. But I mean, <laughs> maybe it just had to go into Nathaniel's deck. Um, yeah, I think the assets were overall weak other than boxing gloves, which I think is super cool. I think everything else... Oh, and safeguard level zero is exciting. Assets were disappointing, events are super cool, and overall, just as a new Guardian playstyle, I think it's super exciting. Yeah, I think Guardians are super fun, but you know, they after a while they kind of had to mix things up a little bit. They did it with Carolyn as well. Mm -hmm. Just you know, there's only so many ways you can kill things. You're right. Uh, Guardians are kind of one of the more samey classes, huh? Because they kind of, yeah, they play their weapons, they kill things with them have a lot at least in, with the exception of carolyn as you pointed out they don't have a lot else going on whereas seekers have all these different unidentified assets that kind of steer the way they're going to build their deck and their play style and, and they they have that and guardians have kind of lacked it so this is a whole new style for them it also kind of um when we talked about the mauser in winnie 
I kind of lamented that rogues were getting a gun and I was like, well, that's the only thing Guardians have that's special is they have the best weapons and Guardians got a really good, maybe one of the best level zero guns in Winnie's pack. So at least they gave Guardians something new, like a shiny new toy that I'm excited about. So I, that took the sting from that a little, a little bit lower. Are there any, uh, so kind of like with Harvey, you could export those cards into another investigator. Are there any other investigators you would want to export some of these cards into? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, how many of them had testless damage? Because I think that's really interesting for Carolyn. But I don't know that there were actually that many of them. I'm thinking, yeah, like clean them out is a fight. Counterpunch is a fight. I think it's all testing. Is it all testing? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I assume okay, it get, is. I assume we'll get mano a mano or something at some point, but uh, yeah, it was all testing. Yeah. Okay. So no, this seems like maybe one of the most kind of uh, parasitic decks. I think that's a word that I've heard designers of Magic the Gathering use to describe when cards kind of only work with more of their own type of cards. Like there are certain new mechanics in magic that like it's makes a fun new deck, but it's not really a bunch of cards that you're going to mix and match with other things that much. That's maybe kind of what we found here. Um, yeah. That's okay. I think Calvin can actually take all, like all of these, Ooh. right? Calvin takes spirit cards. But yeah. I don't know that, that many of them are super good for him. Like you could use get over here, I guess, to get enemies to you to give you the edge. Um, but when I was saying that spirit trait hasn't mattered that much, I kind of forgot about Calvin. Ever since our first campaign of the Forgotten Age, where I got burned so badly with Calvin, uh, I've never played him again. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> Ever since getting trapped in the body of a Yithian with five of each kind of trauma, I have not been a Calvin fan. <laughs> but... <laughs> I I actually wish. That the boxing gloves themselves were spirits because like boxing Calvin does kind of kind of have a nice ring to it. That would be fun if he could play those. Uh well there's always versatile, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we really appreciate uh likes and subscribes and comments. That helps us uh get recommended more often and find more viewers. Uh Steven, thank you for joining me. We're uh Seven tenths of the way done, right? <laughs> exactly. Almost there. We're getting closer. Uh, before we sign off, any any parting thoughts? Uh, no, just excited to see the uh, level up cards. I always ask you this, and you never have any. You gotta you gotta come prepared. <laughs> All right. Well, then we'll get out of here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Until next time, be optimal. <laughs>